This is my Pyre Computer Drums drum machine from 1975. They were also called the 3750 because it was written on the PCB and also called the Programmable Drum Set because that's what was written on the cases. Except this one's different and we'll get to that in the history section shortly. They're known for being arguably the first drum machine to be able to store and recall patterns from memory. Instead of switches or prearranged drum patterns, patterns could be recorded to memory chips and replayed whenever wished. In other words, the world's first programmable memory drum machine. Practically every other machine since has been made in the same way. This one itself is one of the first ever made and is likely the oldest still working example because of very common memory chip failures. But we're jumping ahead again. I'll show some history, the backstory as to how I ended up buying it, some fixing up of this one and finally we'll test it. If all goes well, a sample pack of the onboard sounds from this very machine will be available from a link in the description and in the comments section. John S. Simonton Jr. and his father created Pyre Electronics Incorporated in 1959, with commercial products being sold from 1967 in Edmond, part of Oklahoma City in Oklahoma. His idea was to create kits of music equipment to sell to the public. He and his wife, Linda Kay, would build the company up by designing and supplying kits to readers of electronics magazines. People would see the kits advertised and order the bits to build them at home. By 1972, with assistance from various engineers, including Craig Anderton, Marvin Jones and Steve Wood, the company had moved on from small kits to producing analogue synthesizer modules and other electronic music-related gear. A full synthesizer, the Pyre 2700, was produced, containing many kit-based modules. That one used a strange shirt-button type of keyboard, but was thankfully replaced with proper keys and renamed the Pyre 2720, of which I have two. There are video in themselves, do let me know in the comments section if you want to see more of them. Then in 1974 the 4700 series was released, featuring improved modules and improved designs. Here's a 4730 module from my own collection. In 1975 they began publishing Polyphony magazine, which later became the famous Electronic Musician magazine. Also in that year is when the Pyre 3750 drum machine was created, one of which was used by Peter Gabriel on Games Without Frontiers. The Oz, Gnome, Proteus, Fat Man and other music products streamed out of the company. John Simonton was unfortunately diagnosed with esophageal cancer in 2004 and died in November of 2005 at his home in Arcadia, Oklahoma. The company itself, however, has continued and is still around. Check them out at Pyre.com. So, how did I end up with a bunch of stuff? About three years ago, 8-Bit Guy on YouTube showed a video where he was looking through some old equipment for Commodore computer parts in a warehouse in Oklahoma City. The seller was called Oklahoma Electronics Recycling. He wasn't too far away while we lived near Tulsa. I saw a video of his about the box and other Pyre parts, so set up an appointment to go and look at the equipment. Then in January of 2021, my wife and I headed over to take a look. While in there, I did ask about any signs of a Pyre drum machine, to which the seller said he hadn't seen one. I myself had only ever heard of it, but never seen one, and certainly never seen a circuit board of one, just didn't know what to look for. He did say that all the stuff that he'd collected was from Pyre's original old warehouse in Oklahoma City, abandoned for many years. It was where their R&D, prototyping, repairs and sales had been located all the way back to the 1960s. The seller said it was like someone closed the door decades ago and never went back in. There was certainly nothing in the box that looked like a drum machine, but at least there were plenty of other parts to purchase. After paying up for some modules, keybeds and two empty Pyre 2720 keyboard cases, he very generously said to pick whatever I'd like from the remaining parts. With many things new to my eyes, the next part will be to research what I'd bought. Online research began delving through pages of related information. The modules are quickly discovered to be mostly for the Pyre 2720, and several were cleaned, repaired, resoldered, and then went into one of the empty cases. One was found to be part of a Proteus synthesizer. And along the way, there were curious signs of some things being actual prototypes. Some were crudely marked Proto on them, others that looked more finished were like this keyboard module with Proto D on it. 
The drum machine was looked at but initially discounted from Thorpe because all the internal boards in pictures had white drum pad areas and Pia 3750A written on them. At least I knew the name of it, I had no idea before. Mine wasn't like that, it had bare tape over the drum pads. Looking closer I saw it had computer drums on the back. Nowhere did it say 3750 or in fact Pia. Only computer drums. I had no idea what it was. Pia Scott posted an interesting account of the 3750 on the message board of Pia.com, within which he said the original boards had two 2112 memory chips. Later ones had daughter boards and other modifications to use different types of memory. This one here is at least an early one. Hmm. So could it be an early one that someone messed up and sent in for repair? Yeah, it could. Except I've never seen one with computer drums written on the back. Ones with no case and with no white lettering. In fact, as this quite wonderful picture from Reverb.com shows, they used to ship with the original white lettering already lined up and in place on brand new production boards. The original manual also has 3750A written on the component's diagram. But I also wonder about the tape being in place for the drum touch control. Surely that would be a late addition, if any, in any build. And why tape? The image showed the white overlay, not household sticky tape. But here's something really interesting. While regular kits that were sent out to people had component placement markers in white, like R28, C18, D3, that kind of a thing, so they knew where to put the components, mine is completely devoid of those. There's nothing on the board. While the Eco computer rhythm of 1972 did allow setting of switches to create and play patterns, those patterns, again arguably, weren't stored in memory. It also bizarrely allowed for punch cards to set up patterns. Also, many people think that the Roland CR78 was the first programmable drum machine, but it was released three years later than the 3750 in 1978. A final twist is that Pia produced the programmable drum set from 1975 to 1983, but also released a product called Computer Drums for interfacing to an Apple II. It brings the question of are there any other Pia 3750s with computer drums written on the PCBs and do any of those still work? Remembering of course that the first ones had the very dodgy 2112 RAM chips. This Pia computer drums is quite possibly the oldest surviving programmable memory drum machine in the world. Here are a collection of shots of changes and repairs that I've been doing. It needed a thorough clean and some repairs when I got it about three years ago, but it's never had a case and has looked scruffy with the RCA connectors. Maybe it never did have a case and maybe it never had connectors. They were only put on to fix it and to hear it once I'd got it going. The battery box was also glued on with hot glue until yesterday. One difference to powering usual 3750s is that I've always used a 6 volt AA battery pack in place of one of the 9 volt batteries, but I've also not had the common RAM failure over the last 3 years. A suggestion is to remove the batteries except when playing it, if anyone owns a working one. Here is a spares board for the RAM chips. It's another Pia product, an 8700 controller circuit, which apparently are very rare. Its use for the drum machine has been for spare RAM chips because some parts were already missing. The two 2112s on the drum machine were in fact missing when I got it. Taking them from the 8700 allowed it to use actual Pia parts. OK, let's power it on. Play a pad. And then let's record something. Light comes on. That'll do. Now, yeah. record something else. So there we are, there it is, running. Okay, thanks very much for watching.